today we are going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Consumers, uh, how consumers are influenced. Chapter questions, how do consumer characteristics influence buying behavior? What major uh, processes, especially the psychological processes, influence the consumer response with marketing? How do consumers make the purchasing decisions? That has been expanding like crazy. I'm very interested in this topic. A uh, hundred years ago, it was very difficult. You had to get a few people. It was very hard to get people, but you had to get people and then you could bring them in and you could have a small chat with them called the, the focus groups. And you can give them your samples and see what do they think of these samples. Well, increasingly, things have changed. Now you can get groups of billions of people and very easily identify what are their interests um, and very specifically identify what are their interests. For example, we all know their social media and their social media analytics. Uh, I understand one of the students here wanted to talk about social media with Britney Spears and other students might be talking about social media and how some people do marketing for free get information for free, use free technology to promote videos like Psy in Gangnam Style. Psy, more than 2 billion people have checked Psy's videos. You can see when they're watching the video, where is the most interest in the video, what part of the video people don't like, what part of the video they start to share with other people. So if you make your own videos, for promoting your products and you see people are just watching the video for five seconds then they stop watching for five seconds and stop watching for five seconds and stop some people go continuing you know you have to change the beginning or you can see where people what second people are starting to share to other people those spots are very valuable so you need to delete that first part and copy the area that people are sharing how can you do that? And you can see quite easily everything, these billions, or with uh, the whole idea of consumer behavior, it's a lot more technical nowadays. Not only can you see what they're doing with YouTube, but you can see where the customers are going. If this was a uh, part of the city or part of the, the country and you're walking through it, where do you set up your business? Where do you think most customers will be? Technology nowadays should tell you where exactly you want your business. You can see every person's cell phone with their GPS and where they walk. And if some people are walking two aisles down and then turning and walking down the other aisle, you can see most people go this way and most people avoid the back part of the aisle. So your business should be where these people are walking, where all these cell phone GPSs are showing people go the most. It might not be on the big roads. Sometimes it's in the back roads, but people use those for a certain purpose. So make sure you understand all of that information is available to show people what is the consumer doing, what a, um, the overall consumer behavior. Cultural factors. Social factors, personal factors, there's a lot that influences pers um, the consumer and what makes them buy. Make sure that you guys are aware of the, the cultural factors. Some people don't realize, as you can see here, that uh, this is a list of many people from USA, many people from Denmark, many people from India, many people from China. This is showing what makes them do certain things. This is showing why do they go to work and we see here that in the United States uh, a lot of people say the most important reason you go to work the most important reason that wakes you up gives you energy to get out of bed and go to the work is to grow the business and then the second most important reason here according to Hofstede is personal wealth or this year's profits and power which is interesting because these cultural factors that influence these consumers especially personal wealth, is the opposite over here. So everything above this line is what people like 
and below this line is what they definitely do not value as much. And we see people in China, for example, they don't do things just for personal wealth. They do things more just to avoid being an outsider or to, uh, in Korea, avoid being wangta. Um, why do you do things? You want to do things so people don't think you're strange. That's one of the main reasons. So you respect ethical norms. And in China, it's very important to uh, have national pride. Of course, a lot of people there may be interested in power or honor or face, but this idea of honor and face isn't even considered by people in USA. So make sure you understand these cultural factors are very important. Now that I've started to introduce the idea of culture, please make sure you're aware in the chapters, there's questions at the end of each chapter. And I have summarized in these PPT that you have access to, for example, in chapter four, um, what is the customer lifetime value? Today's a very short class. We won't talk about it too much, but last class we did talk about it. So make sure you're aware what is customer lifetime value and the formula and the explanation, it's already here. Uh, same thing for this week. How do consumer characteristics influence buying behavior? Here's a very short answer. Lucky you, I'm giving you a much, much longer answer today. Um, uh, same thing for chapter six, chapter seven, all the rest of the chapters. And then also with, <coughs> in the textbook, it talks about Maslow and what motivates people. This is information that you should read together with Maslow's statements. Uh, the idea of Maslow and Herzberg and McGregor, those are very important for understanding what motivates some people, but it's most appropriate for Western people and it's not the same in other countries. So this is talking about how people in the United States may do the opposite as people in Japan. So the areas with the red are summarized notes for you to take a look at. And there's just more information how Hofstede is important but must change from country to country. Uh, overall, the main idea is parochialism. We must understand culture is very important, but culture changes. And you must understand that if you don't understand the culture, it's just because you don't understand it. It doesn't mean it's bad. doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just means that you need to learn more about it. If you're doing business internationally, you have to be aware of what their values are. And there's a, a lot of information. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of it. This is just showing some of the ideas. Um, the idea that culture is an iceberg is very important. We started to talk about that before. Here's the, uh, the picture showing that you can see arts. You can see drama and TV shows, just like the K-pop or the K-drama. Um, but you can't see things like their decision-making patterns, why they do certain things, how they respect the hierarchy, um, how they work with nonverbal communication. So there's lots of information here. Um, again, culture is not right or wrong. Social factors. What are some other social factors or personal factors that people are taking a look at? This book, The Outliers, made by Malcolm Gladwell, it's talking about how each person is human, so we're all very, very similar. There's not a very big difference in DNA or intelligence with people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates or the Beatles or Mozart. They're not aliens, although some people might think they are. There's a lot of similarity with them. And the main thing is that the environment they're in and the culture they're in definitely influences them. Their social values and stuff. These people, for example, these two top people, they were just in an environment where their families gave them computers before anybody else generally in their country. And they fell in love with them and they surrounded themselves with the computers when nobody else really had them. And the few people that had these computers were in their neighborhood. So even on the weekends and uh, at night, they were able to use computers when nobody else could. So when they're in middle school, high school, they did so much computer work and computer games, they knew more than a lot of the other world experts. That obviously makes who you are and that, just, that forms these type of consumers. These are some more things that are influencing your consumer. The idea of trends. More and more, we can see what's happening now with the international trade balance. 
North American people are relatively rich and they're usually buying things that are low priced, made outside, sometimes made in uh, Mexico, sometimes made in uh, Vietnam or China. So a lot of their money is going outside of the country. And so more and more, we're having a trade deficit in the Western world, um, in North America and in, in Europe. And at the same time, related to that, interest rates are going down. And because you're able to borrow more money for a lot lower price, the business owner's profits are going up. So you should have more people thinking about those things. If companies are getting more profitable, consumers are starting to demand they be more social responsible, socially responsible, corporate social responsibility, or with uh, not just social media, but with social marketing, we should be thinking about how you can take care of other people, even though your company is making a lot of profit. So how can you give back? Uh, more details about this. It's starting to be a, a huge motivator, a social motivator. More people see that the top companies make huge profits, but the regular person doesn't make a lot of profit. This is showing in the United States, the CEO is making, on average, 380 times more money than the average person. Not 380 times more than the poorest person, just 380 times more than the average person. And again, this is pushing people to focus on corporate social responsibility. How is the company giving back? What are they doing with their social media? Are they very active with social marketing? I would encourage all of you, this, hopefully today we can start talking a little bit about social media and next week or in the very soon weeks, I would like you guys to try to find examples of the companies you like what are they doing with social marketing? Not just marketing to society, but there's a special word, social marketing. Maybe it's considered one word, hyphenated. So try to check your company. Are they doing something with social marketing? Usually social marketing is where you're trying to teach people about pollution or uh, dangerous things. So check those things out. A another thing with the environment that's influencing the consumer is the whole idea of the big businesses, a lot of the big businesses are now coming from East Asia. They've started to move away from Europe and North America. And as you can see here, a lot of them are coming from China, 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 Japan, etc. The world's biggest companies. Um, one of the last things I'll show for, for this uh, group of slides is an interesting trend that uh, I've been following. And it's showing that uh, many years ago, we had the printing press in the 1400s, the first time that we were able to make uh, textbooks. And with that, society around the world started to change. And then we had, uh, in the middle, we have the picture of the very first highly respected uh, book, which was uh, like an SSCI type article. Then we had the uh, telegraph and teletype, Morse code type of communications. That changed the world. Then we had the telephone, that changed the world. Then we had the TV and the radio where we had the mass communications going back and forth. But more and more, we're starting to really see huge changes in the world now with social media. Um, not just social media, but the educational aspect of online information like TED or Allison, Coursera, um, edX. So try to understand how those things are, are influencing <laughs> you. As you can see here, um, everybody knows YouTube but the idea of open culture, these things show not just uh, cats on skateboards and dogs uh, playing the piano, but it shows all sorts of movies, hundreds and hundreds of movies for free and hundreds, thousands of classes for free. So you can watch these things and learn these things for free on the internet. That's changing people everywhere. It's no longer just the leaders of society that are changing the world, anybody can. These social media leaders like uh, LinkedIn and Twitter and Google, all of these world's biggest companies and activities that almost everybody's using, they're now accessible for everybody, even the world's poorest. So that is starting to change the consumer. As you can see with the idea of influencing the consumer, it's not just for the same program everywhere in the world. Facebook doesn't work the same everywhere. Google doesn't work the same everywhere. You must understand Facebook analytics. You must understand Google analytics. 
But as we see here, cacao, lime, um, neighbor in Korea, cacao talk is far, far more important than just the regular uh, Facebook. Same thing with neighbor or lime in Japan. Um, this concept is, is very important, and it's all starting the same time. 1998, uh, 2000 is where it's starting everywhere in the world. Here's in Korea, then we look through. So we've got the idea how uh, culture and society and personal factors are definitely influencing, influencing the consumer. But what is culture? Culture is a fundamental determinant of a person's wants and behaviors, acquired through so, uh, socialization process with family and others. Um, Make sure that you're aware of the diagram that I started to show before. There's a diagram of four main parts. Culture makes up your values and views. Your values and views makes your attitude, and your attitude makes your behavior, and then the behavior makes your culture. It's a circle going around, and it changes everywhere. Everywhere values can change. Everywhere attitudes can change. Everywhere the behavior can change. The idea of how close can you be to a consumer? How much noise do you like to hear when you're shopping? Some people want to be in a quiet area. Department stores here, they like to have lots of noise in the background, even in the music. Subcultures, of course, there's many types of culture. Nationalities, religions, racial groups, geographic regions. In addition to that, there's the uh, money types of culture. Upper class, uh, lower upper, upper middle, middle, working class, upper lower, lower, lower class versions of society. How can you work with that? More and more people are starting to identify that a lot of, especially the consumer product goods, are focusing on the lower areas because there's many more billions of people here than there are up top. How can you sell, for example, uh, Johnson & Johnson shampoo if you normally you have a container this big in Canada or USA and it costs $10 but $10 might be one week's pay in other areas. When you have high levels of society and low levels of society, things change drastically. For example, the other day we were talking about how some workers, they might laugh at you if you say, you can work for me or we can work together, I'll pay you $200 a month. Some of you might laugh, 200 bucks, forget about it. But other people on other sides of the world they would be very, very happy to do that. So companies have to modify. Companies need to be able to adapt to that. Um, and the same thing, if you are making thousands of dollars, maybe three, four, five thousand dollars a month, you can afford ten dollar shampoo. But in Kenya, where they're working for a hundred dollars a month, on average, people just like you, university educated, smart, hardworking people, they'll work for one hundred dollars a month. They're not going to pay $10 for a big shampoo very often. What can you do? Johnson & Johnson has been coming up with very simple ideas. Whereas sometimes people in North America, they'll take a shower for half an hour, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, sometimes two hour long shower. Or they'll jump in a hot tub or in a swimming pool and maybe bathe there. They can take their time and take all the swimming pool water they want, even when, or jump in a bay, uh, sorry, a bay or a lake and wash their hair and use the whole tube of shampoo because they're considered rich and it's not that much of a problem. But in India and Africa, um, throughout Africa, some people are starting to take this consumer product and just chop it up into 200, 300, 500 pieces. So it's not a huge bottle of shampoo, it's an individual package of shampoo. And even then, that might last a family for several days. Whereas here, we could use the whole tub for fun in one afternoon. So how is that gonna impact people? Related to social factors, of course, it's not just the money, sometimes it's the health. You guys are all aware now, a lot of people are talking about Ebola. You guys know Ebola is a virus, it's killing. I think it's at a million people have now died and it's starting to spread around the United States. That's something that's scaring a lot of people. They don't know how to manage it very well. A lot of people get it and you die, so you're, you're closed off in a community. It's a very dangerous thing. What about the consumers there? How much are even the people that are protecting those people? 
What about the medical officer that's there? How much are they making? Do you guys have any idea? As a worker, a full paid worker there, would you know, a, a volunteer is doing it for free, <laughs> but a full paid worker working in a job that you may die any day, how much do you need to be paid? The average person there is getting paid $300 a month or less. So please make sure you understand. Your idea of taking a $10 bottle of shampoo or $200, forget about it, it's not worth your time. Other people, it's life or death. They will be influenced. The consumers are definitely influenced by that. How does it impact you? How does it impact a company? The consumer, many students nowadays, just like corporations, they're outsourcing. They know that there's smart, hardworking, good people on the other side of the world that you can work with. You can get them to help edit some of your papers or help you research or if you need to do certain uh, marketing or like Britney Spears, how does Britney Spears or Psy get very valuable, get very important? Any ideas of uh, Britney Spears? Anybody want to talk about that yet? Okay. Uh, with, many, with many websites such as Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, she can keep in close touch with her fans uh, on daily basis. Let, can I just interrupt for a second? You can keep talking, but we are thinking and a lot of people say she's doing it. Well, in here, we started talking about outsourcing. If you love Britney Spears, and I'm sure you love Britney Spears. Some people might love her, some people might hate her. But she has how many fans emailing her or active on her Facebook? I think you said five million each day? Yeah. So does she answer people? Does it re even, even that, does her manager, Britney Spears' top manager for billion dollar business, does he or she answer you? No, absolutely not. Right. Who does? Who do you think does? It's her website. And the answers should be her idea, but who does that typing? Part-timers from where? Are, th are they from New York or LA? Probably not. Does anybody know where is the most active call center in the world? Even if you want to phone a company today, North American company, and ask questions. We've, we got two people fighting this. Yes? India. India is incredibly active. They're almost the most popular. There's 1.2 billion people in India. Many of them can do that type of work. Yes. But it's not number one. Philippines, Philippines yes. Because the, Ili the Indian, Indian po yes, congratulations. Yes. India has one, more than a billion people working, but some people don't really like the Indian sound as much. Uh, they think it's a little bit difficult to understand. Versus the Philippine English sounds much closer to North American English. So the Philippine worker sounds like somebody from New York or New Jersey. And so they're a lot more comfortable with it. Yes, it's also a lot lower than the people in New Jersey or no North America, yes. Uh, Manila, Philippines has actually more people in the big world's global Fortune 500 companies for call centers than anywhere else. And that same thing goes for Britney Spears. Um, I'm not saying she does it, but uh, I would think that a lot of people that want to be active, people and companies, get people from Kenya or Nigeria or Philippines that speaks English perfectly, they will answer for you. I'm guilty, I do also. I have people working for me in uh, Nigeria, in uh, Kenya and in the Philippines and not right this week, but in the past I've had people working for, for me online researching and things from India also. Why not? Is it bad? The whole idea of corporate social responsibility. A lot of people are saying that's super important. Why? Because there's so much unemployment. You have to understand what motivates the consumer. Maybe the consumers lost their job in New York 
because all the jobs are now outsourced to Philippines. So that person might be angry also because the CEO is making 380 times more than average and I'm unemployed, so I'm making nothing. So I'm really, really upset. And then if they start giving jobs to people in other countries, I'm extra angry because he's not loyal. He's not helping our country, right? He's not uh, taking care of community. He's just greedy, greedy, greedy. Is it greedy if you're helping people that are dying of Ebola in Africa or that are starving in Kenya or starving because of the tsunami in Philippines? You're giving work to them? How can you deal with that? So Britney Spears is just one example. We're going to keep talking about it, but just like I reminded you earlier, I'd like you to start thinking, how can you do your social media marketing? Or more importantly, how can you do social marketing with that idea? You want to help people around the world. You know most people are in the poor countries. Most people are at the bottoms here, like in China or in India. Indonesia, that's the most people in the world. They can't afford to pay a lot, but they would work very hard to get that pay. How can you work with them and help them, but at the same time manage the other people that will hate you if you're not loyal and you're giving jobs outside of our city? How do you deal with that? Yes? You're talking about my personal Facebook, so you've seen some of the things that I've done. Like, I've spent time in these areas. Um, I, I'm helping people here. I help rich people here. I'm actually going later this afternoon to, uh, I think it's NBC. I'm supposed to be on TV with some of the world, world at least K-pop, the Korea's biggest, richest people this afternoon. So I'm helping the rich people, and I'm trying to help the poor people. But, but don't misunderstand. I have been attacked, too. A lot of people say, when I'm advertising a job, to do what Britney Spears does. Britney Spears has, how many did you say again? She, she has uh, fans on Facebook every day? I think she reached around 10 million. 10 million people she's communicating with. So she can't do it. And if I had that type of job, if I was her manager, I would get somebody in the Philippines or in India or in Kenya that are poor and starving, they had the tsunami maybe uh, damaging their whole community, I would want to help them. And so I'd advertise jobs, not just in Elance, www.elance.com, or freelance.com, or freelancer, or VA assistance, all of these will help introduce you to people working outside. But just look for job sites in those other countries. When I've listed jobs there, the people that lost their jobs in New York or LA or Toronto have attacked me and said really bad, bad things. So how are you going to market yourself that way? What? You want to pay somebody five bucks an hour? Minimum wage should be $15 an hour. You're a terrible, terrible man. So think about those things. So go ahead, please continue. How does Britney Spears do it? What, I what is she doing? A plus before launching her new ember. Uh, her posted many songs on her website. Uh, these are not full version, but demo version. As a result, there are many clicks and replies and followers about her posting. It doesn't cost too much. She only had to pay the money for her social media team. Because these days, many applications can be used free of charge. Uh, therefore, Britney's case is very interesting for me. So I want to share this story with you. Thank you very much. Um, to Analytics, there are uh, many ways to track video performance using Team Analytics. I can monitor, monitor views over time, discover the source of traffic, audience demographic, demographics, uh, geographical impact. Uh, Great, just for just a second. So what we're saying is that Britney Spears is super popular and she's super rich. <laughs> But some people, I, I have to be careful because in some countries if I say she sucks or other people think she sucks, that's illegal, so I can't say that. But some people might not like her as much as other people. 
Some people say that her talent level is um, interesting. So how is she that popular? And so you're starting to answer that. She's not just doing what she wants and having that sold. She's studying the consumer. And so how is she studying the consumer with the analytics? What is the analytics program doing? Go, go ahead, keep, you were talking about the analytics program. back uh, location, audience retention, you said before. Yes. And uh, track of sub subscription rate, amount of shares on the other social media like Facebook or uh, Twitter, right? And uh, so. She can also have hundreds of people or thousands of people will send her a practice song. Here, I wrote a song for you. Can you sing this? So she might make that and make a demonstration video or song of that. And she'll put it on her Facebook site. And she'll put another demonstration and another video and another video and another song. Depending on this song, nobody's watching. This song, everybody's sharing. So this one's popular. So she promotes this in her concerts and in the big media. So she can find out how many people share this compared to how many people share this. You just focus on what people like by using the social media analytics. Yes, that's very, very important to understand. Same thing with the companies. Great, thank you very much. Did you have other things or that, that's it? That's the main point, okay. Um, we are almost out of time today. There's a lot of information that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going through chapter five, which is the consumer uh, behavior. But in addition to, to that, there's uh, the business culture. So this is the consumer markets as we see, but also the business or the corporate customers or the corporate markets. Those are the same thing nowadays. One of the only differences is with the management information systems, the multi-million dollar social media analytics type programs compared to the consumer market. So we're going to talk about this more and more. Uh, I'm just going to flash through a few other slides. We'll talk about this next class just to help you guys think about what is important to consider. So we've got uh, five more minutes so, or less. There's the reference groups we need to start thinking of. Um, of course, there's the families, the personal factors, the age that impacts people. Are people going to use social media if they're 70 years old? People have to learn these new things. Isn't it good enough just to have a Facebook where I see my grandkids' pictures or do I have to learn social media analytics? When do you need to learn this? Or when is it okay just to go ahead and do anything on social media? What's the difference? How can you use it smart? How can you build your personality? If Facebook represents my personality, how can I get somebody in Philippines to, to have answers with my type of personality? How can you do that? Yes? Yes. So uh, originally, I would have to show my personality. I would show the Facebook that is me. And you would have to interview many people. But interviewing people sometimes can be tricky. People can trick interviews. You need to actually see what other people are doing. In general, it's the opposite. I am working with my Facebook. I'm hiring somebody for my Facebook, yes. But I need to check your Facebook. Is your style of Facebook the same as mine? Or sometimes do you go in a different direction? If it's a different, that must change. And with billions of people in the world, you can find some people that are very close. Be careful. It's very important for you. If you're going for job interviews now, I know for a fact, sometimes one summer I had to hire more than 500 workers. I had other workers checking each person's background. They will check your Facebook. They will check your LinkedIn account. What are you saying? What are you doing? Are you a good worker for me? You do very well in interview, but is your Facebook the right type of personality or are you a little bit crazy or something like that? Yes? Uh, 
do you think that's a good idea? I, if I interview you and then you don't have an open Facebook, that's showing me you're hiding something. I don't want anything to do with somebody that's hiding because that's maybe dangerous. Why risk it if there's billions of other people that want the job, right? One time I listed a job to hire people, I was working with the company you guys know as BlackBerry. BlackBerry, we listed a job advertisement on a Friday afternoon. Monday morning, and that's, that was 15 years ago, before BlackBerry was famous. Most people never knew about the company. But on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had more than 37,000 job applications Monday morning. How can you go through and deal with somebody that's going to hide your background when you've got 30,000 applications? This is 15 years ago. Nowadays, it's even worse. So make sure you also understand the idea of motivations. As I showed you, people in the United States are motivated by other things than people in China or India. Um, the textbook promotes the idea of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It shows what motivates people. But this is good for Western values only. It's very different in other areas. So I will talk about how this is different. The idea of how you frame things. So there's a bunch of things for review. I'm also going to be getting into the idea of social media. Very soon, I believe somebody here started to look at this case study. Which student was looking at this one? Nobody was looking at this one? You were looking at this? Oh, you don't need to talk now. We're out of time. Just for next time, we'll talk about it. This we will definitely talk about in detail maybe next class. So what are we saying? It's nice that this has been highlighted. So what are the rules? How can you understand why people avoid social media? Here are some points that they will explain next class. What is the cycle for leveraging social media? What are the steps? Step one. And then step two, all of these things. And also important here, I believe they will talk about next week. This is supposedly one of the world's best social media advertising commercials. You guys need to get to understand who is this, what is this product, what are they promoting, and how are they doing a good job. Sometimes that company grew incredibly. All they did was send a get well card. Hey, you pussy. Hey, you crazy guy. Stop being sick. Be strong. Be tough like me. It's almost an insult. But that comment made the company super successful. How? And the details are already in social media. They're explained here. So any questions? If you want more information on social media, there's a lot of information here. Here's how Britney Spears is using it. So if we can talk about this next class. Here's information about how Khan Academy, people not just using social media, but they're online learning anything. This is very, very valuable. I suggest some group focus on this. Um, and the whole idea of the marketing mix is changing. So please make sure you're aware of these case studies. You don't need to read all of them. Hopefully one group will take one case each and start to present it next class. Any other questions? No? Okay, please make sure that you're aware. What is social media? Look at some of the backgrounds for social media, but also social marketing. Find some articles about social marketing. Show what other people are talking about with social marketing. That's very important because October 6th, we need to start getting ready to present our papers. Make sure you're ready to present your papers October 6th or the very last day to do it is October 13th. Um, all papers should be finished by October 13th, so start presenting next Monday. Um, and at the same time as you're finding papers, try to save all papers related to social marketing. Any questions? So next, next class. Any questions? You had a question? Uh, you need to write a paper. Yes. And you need to be able to present that paper to the class. So yes, at least three, four, five PPT slides minimum and be able to summarize what you found with your research. The very best will take a video of what they're saying and put that on YouTube. Thanks, guys.
If there's not any more questions, I will see you on Monday.